Okay, um, I want to show you our Schoology calendar very quickly here. So today we are on A day doing food energy and electrical energy. And then when we go to B days, they're going to catch up to us by Friday. But here's a homework assignment for the weekend. For the weekend. So after today, you're going to finish four, you're going to finish five. But A students and B students are going to do a video lesson over the weekend. I call it lesson six. And let me just give you a peek at lesson six here, what it looks like. A peek. Well, before I flip this. And then on Monday, when you come in, I'm going to collect four and five from today and six. Okay, so four, five, six are due on Monday. All right, this is what six looks like. Um, so the reason you don't have it yet, oh, that's bad that you don't have it. I should have given it to you before you walked out the door, but I don't have it ready yet. So unfortunately, you'll have to download it or do it online paper. So the notes are this big right here. That's it. Notes, two sample problems. So that should be a pretty quick video. Okay, that'll be easy. And then I wrote down a note to myself. We do problems fix. I just wanna I wanna look through and fix those problems a little bit. So that's what you're gonna do over the weekend. Okay. So one more time, we're gonna play with number four today. You're gonna finish it. We're gonna play with number five. You're gonna finish it, and then you're gonna do number six, and then. And then, then, jump up here. The most important lesson of this whole topic is lesson seven. We're going to do that next week. We're going to do that on Monday and maybe play with it on Wednesday again, a couple days of it. And then after winter break, we're going to be having a test over all of this stuff. So just a little FYI that that's coming up. Okay, winter break. We have a half day off and a Monday. That's not very breaking for you. So. Okay. How about we start with uh, today? Let's do food energy. Food energy. Okay, yesterday we looked at the different, or two days ago, we looked at the different kinds of energies. And I told you to circle the top five because those are the ones that we need to know the most about. In lesson seven, we're going to talk in detail about kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. So those are going to be like the most important ones. And then we need to know how to do food energy and electrical energy that we're going to do today. So on a future test, there's probably going to be a food energy question, an electrical energy question, and then a lot of number seven kinds of things. Okay. So as we do this today, just think to yourself, by the end of the hour, could I do one of these by myself? Okay. All right. So we're going to start with something you, yeah, go ahead. I don't know if you said this or not, but I looked on the Schoology analysis on Monday that homework seven is due. Is that the homework for note six? Yeah, I'll check. Okay. I'll check, Andrew. I must have something messed up. Okay. So for Monday, four, five, six. Four, five, six. Okay. I'll check at lunch. Okay, so you may or may not know this, but let's pretend that you wanted to lose weight or gain weight. You would need to know how calories and pounds like hook together. So in our everyday world, one pound is equal to 3,500 calories. But I'm going to put a quotation around those calories because those are the calories that I read on the back of the package. One pound is 3,500 calories. But in physics language, 
3,500 calories. Like if you were in a different country, the back of the package would say kilo calories. So I don't know why in the United States we call them calories when they're really kilo calories. So what we have to do in our topic here in physics is we have to take our fake word calories and we got to turn them into what they really are. Okay, and if they are if they are really kilo calories, that means that it's really 3,500, I'm going to add three zeros, one, two, three calories, calories. So if I have quotes around it, it means that's what you read on the back of the package. If we don't have quotes around it, that means what they truly are, real calories, or I might call them physics calories. Like this is the real one. This is the one that's in your calculator conversion menus. Okay, so let's do a quick example. So it says a physics student eats a snack. By the way, oh, this is the one. Okay, physics student eats a snack. What is your snack? So a lot of times I go by and give you snacks. I apologize if I'm not giving you snacks today. We were too busy yesterday. I didn't get a chance to do that. All right, so my snack, my example is going to be a package of M&Ms. And the reason I'm picking M&Ms is because I know what the package says, M&Ms. All right, how many calories are in your snack food? But see the quotations? That means read the back of the package. And a package of M&Ms says 220 calories. I'll put quotations. Letter B, how many real calories are in your snack food? Well, that would be 220 kilo calories, which would equal because a kilo means a thousand, it means add three zeros. So add three zeros. It's this many calories. And so I did not put a quotation on that one. All right, now that I know how many real calories is in M&M's, letter C says how many joules are in your snack food. Because yesterday, we wanted to, a lot of times, turn things back into joules so that we could convert or compare. So take out your calculator conversion menu. And let's practice. So I'm going to go into my calculator conversion menu. And I'm using my old TI-86. I'm using this because this is the easiest conversion menu for me to use. All right, so I'm going to go into energy and I'm going to type in my calories, 220, 1, 2, 3, 0, add 3, You got to put in the real calories. So there's calories. And then to joules. And I get 921, 0, 9, 6. 9, 21, 0, 9, 6. Jewels. All right, so what if I was on a diet and I was trying to lose weight, but I had a weak moment and I just had to eat those M&Ms. And then I eat them and they tasted so good. And then it's like I'm mad at myself. Oh, you ate the M&Ms. You just ruined the diet for the day. So I decide that, you know what, I'm just going to work off those M&Ms that I just ate. So the question is, how far will you have to walk in order to walk off those M&Ms that I just ate? How far would you have to walk? We are going to work them off. Work. So I'm going to write down, work is force times distance. I'm working off the M&Ms. 
work is measured in joules and food energy is measured in joules, or at least we converted it to joules. So this is the amount of joules that I need to work off. So I'm going to copy this for the W. So it's going to be 921096. And since my plan is to walk them off, so I can walk them off like this. I could walk fast. We could call that running, okay? It doesn't matter. The physics doesn't change whether you walk slow, whether you walk fast, or whether you run. If you run, you just get to work them off faster. You just like are done earlier. Uh, but I don't want to run. Um, or you could walk on a treadmill, like where I go nowhere, but I'm still walking, okay? But the whole time, F is my body weight. I am moving my body a distance. And so what you plug in for FW for the rest of the assignment is going to be your own personal body weight. But I always say to students, if you, if you don't want to use your own personal weight, you can always pretend you are a 150-pound person. Because I kind of just average that between guys and girls. So I'm going to go into my force menu and say, okay, force menu. So if I was a 150 pound person, FW is Newtons. So I'm going to convert that to Newtons. I would have a, a weight in Newtons of 667. So I'm going to write that down. 667. So just know that's a 150 pound person. If you are lighter than 150 pounds, you're going to have to walk farther. If you're heavier than 150, then you would not have to walk as far. All right, and the question is D. How far do we have to walk to walk off those M&Ms? So I'm going to take 921096 and divide by 667. And I have to walk D equals 1380. 1380.95, and that would be meters. Is that far? We don't know. So I'm going to go into my, my length menu, and how about if we take those meters and turn them into miles? So I'm going to take the answer in meters. Let's turn that into miles. How many miles is that? 0.56 equals point, no, point 0.86, point 0.86 miles. So I could, point 0.86 miles, I don't walk fast, and I normally can walk two miles in an hour. So that's half an hour. That's like 25, 30 minutes. And I can, I can, I could walk off those M and M's. So that's something that you can think of if you ever have a bad diet day. Uh, you can just pause and say, "Okay, I did something bad. I'm just going to go work it off. I'm going to go work it off." But this gives you a way to kind of calculate something using what you know about physics to turn this into something meaningful. All right, I want to go down to number four here for a minute. So sometimes I like to call this lesson the physics of dieting. But dieting doesn't have to mean lose weight. It could be gaining weight. It just means controlling your diet. But sometimes you don't have to do any physics at all. You just have to, like, use common sense. Let's use number four. So when the Pankow store was open, which for you guys would have been, I guess they opened last year, right? So this is what I see. People get off the bus, they run to the Pankow store, and by the time they get to class, they got a bag of chips, they got a candy bar, they got an energy drink or two, okay? It's kind of like, it's like your afternoon snack time, okay? Pankow snack time. All right, so number four, a physics student decides he or she wants to lose weight. To do so, the student stops buying snacks at Panko, effectively cutting 500 calories per day. How many pounds should the student expect to lose after one month? 
which one month is approximately 20 school days. So maybe we all have these bad habits, buying snacks at Pankow, or maybe you're the person who, I gotta have a bowl of ice cream before I go to bed. I always have a bowl of ice cream before I go to bed. Uh, or you gotta have a candy bar a day, or you gotta stop at Starbucks and buy some you know, big drink, okay? Like, what is your thing that you do that could be a major change in your life? I will tell you that I made a change at one point in my life. Uh, this was about five years ago. I I was addicted to Coke. Like, like if I didn't have a Coke, I would just lose it. And um, coffee in the morning and a, a can of Coke, some at least a can or two of Coke. So, anyways, I actually started getting uh, an upset stomach because of the acid in the Coke. So that was why I had to stop drinking Coke. And it was really hard, and I was really crabby. And uh, but. Anyways, I stopped drinking Coke. I haven't had a Coke in over five years. And I probably lost 10 pounds without real, I didn't do anything other than just not having that can of Coke or two a day. And uh, so we start to realize those little sugary habits that we have add up over time. And when you're young, you know, uh, I was a size two when I was your age, okay? And just how uh, baby one, baby two, baby three, and you get older and you look at middle-aged people, they're not all as twiggy as you teenagers, okay? So when you get a little bit older, you might pay a little bit more attention to this. Okay, so number four, we are going to stop buying snacks at Pankow. And we're going to save 500 calories a day. So here we go. 500, quote, calories a day. That's what the package says. So we're going to add up everything that you bought at Pankow and say it adds up to 500 calories a day. This is an example where I know I'm not going to do any physics at all. I'm just going to do normal math. All right. And I'm going to do this for a month, which is 20 school days. So times 20. Times 20. So 50, 500 times 20 is what, 10,000? 10,000. So that's going to save me 10,000 quote calories, packaged calories. And all you and I need to know is that a pound is 3,500 calories. And how many did I just save? 10,000. So I'm going to divide by 3,500. Because every 3,500 calories that I save is a pound. So divide by 3,500. By one month later, I am down 2.86 pounds. 2.86 pounds. Just by cutting out that snack. So if you ever want to lose weight or gain weight, make a small change in your life consistently every single day. Maybe you still eat that ice cream, but you buy a low cal version of the ice cream. Maybe you go to Starbucks, but you get a non-fat, non-sugary drink instead, uh, and it adds up over time. Okay, so there's one other thing that I wanna point out. So you can work off weight by walking, by walking. And if you wanna walk, that's the equation that we're going to use if you want to walk. But you can also work off weight by climbing, climbing. So in number three, we're going to climb. All right, if I want to climb, I'm going to look at yesterday. Gravitational potential energy is anything that is up high. So we're going to use the gravitational potential energy equation that from now on, I'm just going to call the potential energy equation. This is the potential energy equation, MGH. Today, you might not know this equation, but when we do lesson seven, this is one of the most popular equations. You'll know it really soon here. Okay, so number three, a physics student buys a white chocolate mocha size grande with no whipped cream from Starbucks, by the way, it's my favorite drink, on the way to school. According to Starbucks, this drink contains 360 calories. I'm going to put a quotation 
mark around those because those are that's what Starbucks says, okay? But how many real calories are in this drink? Well, if they tell me it's 360, I know that I have to add three more zeros for them to be physics calories. So how many joules is that? So that's the energy conversion menu. So energy, 360, one, two, three calories to joule. That one's a big one. One, five, zero, one, five, zero, seven, two, four, eight, seven, two, four, eight joules. I'm going to put some parentheses or commas there. One million some joules. Again, joules are tiny. That's why we get such big numbers. All right. So I, this time, I don't feel like walking on my treadmill. I don't feel like walking in my subdivision. I'm going to use the Stairmaster. I'm going to climb. Okay. So you can climb on a Stairmaster, which means you climb, but you like really go nowhere. Or you could go find some stairs someplace and you could go up and down the stairs and up and down the stairs and that works too. So if you want to climb, potential energy is measured in joules. How many joules do we want to climb off? One, five, zero, seven, two, four, eight. M is my mass, is my mass. So you would have to go into your calculated conversion menu, put in your pounds, change it into mass in kilograms. But you could want maybe be that 150 pound person. So I'm going to go into my force menu. Force. Force. Um, you could also do this in your mass menu. So I'm going to pretend I'm 150 pounds. 150 pounds, of course. That is how many kilograms? Kilograms. 68. So if you're that 150 pound person, you're 68 kilograms. G is 9.8. H is how high you would have to climb. So I'll calculate H. So I'll take that big number. 1507248. And I'm going to divide by 68. And then I end up having to divide by 9.8. And here's my H. 2261. 2261.78 meters. How high is that? So how about we go into our length menu? And those are meters. And let's convert them into miles. You got to climb 1.41 miles equals 1.41 miles. So you'd have to find a pretty big stairway and go up and down many, many times. Or you could just go on your stairmaster, okay, and like, you know, you know the height of the steps or whatever, or it tells you how many miles that you are climbing but I can effectively work off that drink. And sometimes when you look at the calories and then you equate it to what I would have to do to work it off, it helps you decide that, oh, I really don't need that that badly. Okay, so in summary, you need to know how to take food calories and convert them to physics calories and convert them into joules. And then you need to be able to walk something off or to climb something off so that you can know how much, I'll say how to, how to work it off, or if you just cut something, how many pounds you would lose. But I do want to say one caveat. This little physics of dieting thing only works to an extent. When I say to an extent, like here's an example. What if you decided that you were going to cut 500 calories every day 
for five years. It's like you'd be losing 2.86 pounds. Let's do some quick math. 2.86 pounds every month, so times 12. And I'm going to do it for five years, times five years. I would lose 171.6 pounds, okay? And it's like, I don't even weigh 171.6. It's like, how could I lose that much? So, like, it works for, like, in the beginning, in the beginning. And then about a month later, your body, you learn this in biology, your body adjusts. Homeostasis wants things to stay the same. And all of a sudden, your metabolism changes. And maybe you lost 2.86 pounds the first month. And maybe the second month, you only lost like a pound because your body went into fat storage and, and starvation mode and tried to, to save that. So your body kind of fights against you over time. But this does still give you a good idea of how to make some general predictions. Okay, so let's look at number six. Number six. All right, um, number six says, pretend you are going to lunch at your favorite fast food restaurant. Write down what you normally order there. You might order like we did yesterday. Like if you went to McDonald's, I'm going to get me a Big Mac. I'm going to get me a fry. I'm going to get me a Coke. Okay, what do you order when you go to Taco Bell? Write down what you order. Write down your restaurant. Write down what you order. Go online, get on your phone, look it up, find the calories for all those foods that you order, and what is the total calories of your lunch when you go to the fast food place. And then I want you to work your way through and figure out how far you would have to walk to work off your lunch. Okay? So we're going to pause here for five minutes while you think about your lunch, look up the values and calculate how far you have to walk to work off lunch, all right? What is your favorite fast food lunch? I used to collect restaurant menus and bring menus and, and calorie counts, but now all the stuff's online. You don't need that. You don't need print them anymore. All right, we're going to work off just like number two. All right, so you're looking up the food calories, but to turn them into real calories, you have to add three zeros to everything. And you gotta add up all the foods you're eating, come up with the total calories, and then turn it into joules.
All right, find the total food calories you eat. Then add three zeros to everything to get physics calories. Then add up all your food. And then you know how many calories, how many physics calories you're going to. Then turn it into joules. It's whatever you want to do, how accurate you want to do. Okay. And then if you're going to work it up, we're going to walk. Work is force times distance. For that F, you can pretend you're the 165 or 150 pound person. That would be 667. Or you can put in your own Newton. Find your pound. You can make it real if you want. Use your own weight. People who don't weigh a lot have to walk farther. When you divide to get your distance, that distance is in meters. Then change it into miles because you and I can't picture those meters very well. Where's, where's, where's your fast food place? Taco Bell. Taco Bell. What do you eat there? Four Oh, four. Four. Okay. You probably got to walk kind of far. I think there's a lot of miles. A lot of miles. Probably in real life, you've got a fast metal. And uh, yeah, if you're athletic or whatever, you'll, um, you'll work it off a little faster. That's right. 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 <laughs> okay, two minute warning. Would you now talk to all the people at your table, help them finish? If they don't know what they're doing, help them ask questions. In the next two minutes, everyone needs to have this one done. If you're all done and you want to look at number seven and start to think about it, but we're going to all come together in two minutes and look at the other words. Do you know how to do this? You can calculate working off, walking off, and you can calculate climbing off. All right? You got to look up the food. You got to turn them into physics calories. You got to turn physics calories into jewels. And then you work and then you climb. Plugging in your own master weight. Okay. All right. So, what I'd like to do is I'd like to then transition to talking about electrical energy let's learn what we need to learn here we'll do a couple practice rounds and then we'll be done and with the remaining class time you can work on either one of the worksheets with your teammates okay all right so we're putting food off to the side for a minute and we are going to look at the electrical energy, electrical energy. You have to pay for the electrical energy that you use at your house. How do you know if you're using electrical energy? If something plugs in, it costs money. Like for example, my lamp is plugged in, but 
it's not costing me any money right now because my lamp is off. But once I turn it on, now it costs me money. Okay, it costs me money. All right, how do you know how much it's going to cost? So by law, everything that plugs in has to tell you how many watts it draws. So this is a light bulb, and it says right on it, 100 watts, 100 watts. But I want to point this out before we get too far here today. So we are going to need to know the wattage of everything. And power is in watts. So I'm going to write down the word watts. So by law, everything is supposed to tell you how many watts. But sometimes they don't tell you the watts directly. They instead put the I. I stands for current. And current is measured in amps. And V stands for voltage. And voltage is measured in volts. So you might look at something at your house. And something in your house might say 3A. That means 3 amps. 12V. That means 12 volts. Like on the back of it, it says 3A12V. You're supposed to know that if I took the amps and I multiplied by the volts, because of this physics equation that you don't know yet, but by the way, this physics equation is on the green window up there, P equals IV, then 3 times 12 is 36 watts. Okay, so... You get the power in watts by looking at things. So everything is supposed to tell you. So I did a couple of examples last hour that failed me. Uh, one of them was my space heater. So the space heater right there on the bottom was a sticker that I ripped off. But I see stuff in the plastic, but I didn't see what I said. Uh-huh. I see a 120 V, 120 volts. I can't read it. But it is here. It is here. Wow. Yeah, can't read it. All right, so I'll try something else. I need to try my laptop. Okay. 20 volts. 20 volts. 3.25A. So 20 times 3.25 would be my laptop. My coffee pot would be a good one, but I didn't want to tip over my coffee pot because it's got water in it right now. But the point is, you look on the back of something and it's supposed to tell you the wattage. Okay, so we are going to take our notes on the back of this. Okay, so I'm flipping this over. And I'm going to review the notes because we've actually already taken these notes. So let's make them fresh today. So you know that power is work over time. To be honest, that's the only equation that I memorize for power. But then I talk to myself. I know that work and energy are the same thing. So energy over time. This topic that you and I are doing today is about electrical energy, which means I'm going to solve this for E. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by T. That would be E equals power times time. And... One of the things that we were supposed to learn yesterday that maybe you don't know yet, but the unit of electrical energy 
the unit of electrical energy is a kilowatt hour. It's a kilowatt hour. So I'm going to write that down. Kilowatt hour. So power is normally measured in watts. But for this lesson, I'm going to have to take the watts and I'm going to have to turn them into kilowatts just for this lesson. And time is normally measured in seconds. But just for this lesson, I'm going to have to convert the seconds into hours. And then when I have kilowatt hours and I multiply them together, that's how much energy that I use. And then the next thing that we know or need to know is that you have to pay for the energy that you use. Somebody's going to charge you for your kilowatt hours. So I don't know at your house who your electrical company is. It could be Consumers Energy. It could be Detroit Edison. But they make you pay for your kilowatt hours. And so when I look at my bill, I'm just going to tell you that it costs approximately, I'm writing this in dollars, 0.1 dollars. That means 10 cents. It costs about 10 cents per kilowatt hour. Every kilowatt hour that you use is 10 cents. Now, technically, if you looked at your electric bill, it's less. I'll call it 0.82 cents, but then there's a whole bunch of service fees down here at the bottom. And you get charged this much for the beginning amount of energy that you use. But if you use over this much, then you're charged even more. It's kind of like your house is an energy hog and you have to pay for that extra. And let's just say it all averages out to about 10 cents. So our goal today is to figure out the kilowatt hours of something. And then we're going to multiply it by 0.1 dollars. And then since this would cancel, my answer will turn out to be in dollars, like how much it's going to cost me to use that item for one day, for one day. And then if I wanted to know, well, what if over the course of the month, what would my monthly bill? I could multiply by 30 for a month, or I could multiply by 365 if I wanted to know what it would cost me for a year. So let's do a couple of examples so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's start with light bulbs because light bulbs cost money. And so this light bulb is a normal, cheap light bulb. So you know that there's new light bulbs out, LED bulbs. This is not an LED bulb. So back before LED bulbs, we just called light bulbs light bulbs. Now we call them, oh, it's an LED bulb. So the old bulbs, if it's not LED, it's called an incandescent light bulb. That just means normal light bulb. This costs like 99 cents. And the, thing, the negative thing about these old light bulbs is they burn out easy. And I go to the store and I like want to buy an LED bulb and the LED bulb is $8. It's like, this one's 99 cents and this other one's, this LED one's eight bucks. I ain't spending eight bucks on a light bulb, okay? So many people still buy these old light bulbs. 100 watts. All right, so let's talk about this one. So this one normally goes here in my lamp. All right, but the first thing that we need to do is we have to take that power in watts and you have to turn it into kilowatts. So that means move your decimal point over three. So like one, two, three. So be point one zero zero. All right. I don't want the example to be this light because I don't use this light very often. But I want you to pretend that you have a 100 watt bulb in your lamp at home. So I want you to think of the light in your house that you use the most. 
So it means that in the middle of the day like this, maybe you don't have any lights on at your house, but all of a sudden it's five o'clock and it's starting to turn dark. What's the first light you turn on? What's the light you turn on that's like on all night until you go to bed? It might be your kitchen light. It might be a lamp in your great room or your living room or your family room. It might be a light. Your I don't. What, what's the light that you guys leave on, and then when you go to bed, you turn off. So in my house, so this column here is like I can't answer this question for you because everyone's time is going to be a little bit different. But at my house, I turn on my great room light around five o'clock, and I turn it off about midnight when I go to bed. So five o'clock to midnight would be. Seven hours. Seven hours. All right. So once you have the kilowatts and you have the hours, power times time. Right here. Power times time. The kilowatts times the hours will give me the energy in kilowatt hours. That's what I want. So I need to multiply. The power times the time. I need to multiply the 0.1 times the 7. That'd be 0.7 kilowatt hours a day for me to use that one light bulb. This kilowatt hours is, in, is the unit of energy. The cost is 10 cents, which is 0.1 dollars. In fact, you can write 0.1 in this entire column. That's going to be the same. That's what the electrical company charges me. So I'm now going to take my 0.7. That's how much energy that light bulb draws when I leave it on for seven hours. Times 0.1 times 0.1. And I get 0 0.07. 0 0.07. But this answer is dollars. It costs me seven cents every day to have that light bulb on. And then you say, well, I don't want to spend seven cents. So turn the light off. And you say, well, it's dark. Okay, I'll pay seven cents. All right, I'll pay seven cents. And you feel, feel like, okay, seven cents is not a big deal. It's not a big deal. But that's only one thing in your entire house. And all your stuff adds up over time. So at the end of the month, you're going to get an electric bill. How much of your electric bill is going to be that one light? So I'm going to take my seven cents and I'm going to multiply by 30. Two dollars and ten cents is going to be because of that light. What about over a year? I'm going to take that seven cents and I'm going to multiply by 365. And over a year, that one light is going to cost me 25 bucks, 25.55. You say, wow, that's a lot. What if you have a light, uh, an outdoor light that's maybe on your front porch or by your garage or by your deck or, or backyard that maybe you leave on at night? Over the course of a year, you're paying a lot of money because you're probably having it on more than seven hours and you're spending a lot of money just to have that light on to light up nothing. Okay. So that's something that you could decide to not do, or you could also decide to maybe I want that light on. Well then, you know what, put a 40 watt bulb in it instead of a hundred watt bulb that would save you some money over the course of the year. All right, let's try a different one. Let's try a different one. So the next example that I want to do, uh, I'm going to call it a blow dryer, a blow dryer. Maybe some of you don't blow dry your hair. I get it, but pretend you do. All right, so my blow dryer, like right on it in big numbers, says 1875 watts. That's a hot blow dryer. That's on my hair static. All right, how many kilowatts is that? So I'm going to move my decimal point over 3.1.875. How many hours a day 
Do I blow dry my hair? Well, I'm going to suggest that when you have to figure out the hours, that you round all of the hours off to 15 minute intervals. So like it really probably takes me 70 minutes to blow dry my hair, but I'm going to round off the 15, 15 minutes. So 15 minutes would be 0.25 hours. And so if we round everything off to 15 minute intervals, it makes this assignment a little bit easier. So the time is really 0.25 hours, 15 minutes. So how much did it cost me to blow dry my hair this morning? Uh, so I'm going to do 1.875 times 0.25. I use this much energy, 0 0.46, I'll round it off to 9, 0.469. That's what I used. It cost me 10 cents for every kilowatt hour times 0.1. It cost me... I'm going to always round this number off to two decimal places, so it can be like in money units. So that would be 0 0.05. cost me five cents to blow dry my hair. Five cents over the course of a month. I'll do, I'm sorry, I'll do 0 0.05 times 30. Over the course of the month, cost me $1.50. 0 0.05 over the course of a year, 365. It cost me $18.25. And by the way, while I blow dried my hair, that light was on too at the same time. All right, so some other things. Just because it's plugged in, it doesn't count. It has to be on. It has to be on. All right, refrigerator. Let's write down refrigerator. Refrigerator. Um, TV. TV. What else in your house? I'm going to write down computer. Computer CPU. A computer monitor. And the reason I wrote that down is because I never ever turn off my computer and I never turn off my monitor. So you could also write down an LED light bulb because LED light bulbs use way less watts. In fact, if I had bought that $8 light bulb, it might be only like three or four watts. That would save me so much money over those cheap light bulbs that I have. What if I replace my entire house with these new LED bulbs that have less wattage? So I'm not saying that you have to use the examples that we just wrote down. You have to fill up this column with things in your house that plug in, that turn on, that sound interesting to you. You can have your washing machine, your dryer, your uh, stove, your range. You can have, uh, maybe you have a laptop. Maybe you have a phone charger. Maybe you have a microwave. Maybe you have a, a carrot coffee pot. Maybe you have a toaster, okay? You have to think of things in your house that plug in appliances, anything that plugs in, that turns on, and you write it in the list. How do you get the wax? Sometimes I have you take this chart home and pick up the object and look at the watts or look at the amps and the volts and multiply. Today, just due to time, you're going to look them up online. So pick two things. Pick two things. Make one of them the refrigerator and then you pick a different one. Would you go online and Google, look up, what is the wattage of a refrigerator? Uh, or go to Best Buy, pick any laptop, and find the wattage of a laptop, okay? So pick two things. Make the refrigerator one of them, then pick another one, 
And you go all the way across the list and figure out how much it costs to use that thing for a year. So I'm going to give you five, ten minutes here, and then we're going to come back together in summer. Okay? Everyone do the refrigerator. You pick the second thing that you want to do. You can ask Google what the watts is. Yes. Yeah, just pick something in the middle. Yeah. We're just, we're just estimating. No, the fridge is 24 hours. That thing is plugged in. As you know, when you lose power, it's bad, right? So it's 24 hours. That's why you want to do the fridge. And refrigerators can vary a lot too. Thank you. 
most expensive thing that you pay for. I would say that the average refrigerator is about 800 watts. When I say the word average, you might have found a refrigerator online that was in like the two or three hundreds. Yep, there are new refrigerators in two and three hundred watts. But I want you to think about something. When is the last time your household bought a refrigerator. Maybe you just moved into a house and you just bought one. Or maybe you moved into a house a long time ago and bought one then. Or maybe you moved into a house that already had one. Maybe in your lifetime, you don't ever remember buying a new refrigerator. The point is, refrigerators are expensive. Refrigerators are usually like a thousand to $2,000, maybe even over $2,000. So people don't buy them all the time. But if your refrigerator is more than five years old, which means you would remember when you got a new one, if it's more than five years old, I'm gonna call your refrigerator old. Even though it's still nice and shiny and looks like you don't need a new one, the older your refrigerator is, the more watts it draws. If you bought a refrigerator in the last five years, this number might be closer to 200. I had a refrigerator in my garage, an extra refrigerator in my garage that I got from my mom when she moved. And I thought, oh yeah, mom, I'll take your refrigerator. It still works. Um, we're just gonna put extra food in it and like a bunch of drinks for the summertime in the garage. It'd be kind of cool. But it's my mom's refrigerator. It drew 1,800 watts. I didn't know that, okay? And all of a sudden, I get my electric bill. It's like, why is our electric bill so high? Here's that stupid refrigerator. And I kept it, that refrigerator for about 10 years. And then I was kind of like, you know what? We have spent so much money on this old refrigerator. It would have been cheaper to just buy a new top-of-the-line one that has 200 watts because I'm throwing money away every single month on this old refrigerator. And I say that to you because many people don't realize that. And Consumers Energy and Detroit Edison have a program that they will even come to your house and pick up your old refrigerator just to get rid of it and to recycle it and get it out of, it's like just being an energy hog. It's just hogging too much energy. So buy a new one that has less watts. But that refrigerator, so I don't know what you looked up and what you wrote down, but most of us don't have a brand new refrigerator. Most of us did not buy a refrigerator within the last five years. So you're paying a lot of money on your refrigerator. If you want to know what your refrigerator is, when you go home, stick your head in the refrigerator. Um, usually on the top shelf, there's a sticker on the side or on the back and it will tell you the wattage. 
And then you can go ahead and you can calculate that. And then you can compare that to a new refrigerator of 200 watts and decide, Mom and Dad, I think maybe we should consider getting a new refrigerator and show them that it will pay for itself within three years. Okay. And new refrigerators all have LED lights in it also. All right. The other thing that I want to make super clear to you is if you had to predict in your house what, what costs a lot to you, it's things that get hot. Things that get hot. My first example is going to be the space heater. So this is what our school district did about I don't know, three, four years ago. Is they wanted to save money on energy costs, electricity costs. So they no longer, well, they now, when they air condition, not as much. Okay, so um, it used to be cooler in the buildings now, not as much. Now in the winter time, they don't make it as warm in here. And some classrooms get really cold. So many teachers went and got a space heater. Me too, I had one. Okay, so I tease Mrs. Fryer about this all the time because she turns on her space heater in about October and turns it off in May. Okay, I've only turned my space heater on once this entire school year so far. Um, she has those on every day. So the school district is trying to save money and energy costs. Everyone goes and buys their space heater. These things draw like 2,500 watts. Now, if you turn it on for 15 minutes to warm yourself up, that's maybe not too bad. But what if you plug it in every morning and run it all school day? You call that eight hours. Every day, their school, you know that this is costing the school district more than they were trying to save. Okay, they turned the temperature down. Everyone bought a space heater. Now it's costing them more. And so a lot of school districts have banned space heaters. And then the teachers throw a fit and whatever. And so it's been a big, big issue. Um, another one is refrigerators. A lot of teachers in a school district have little mini fridges. I actually have them back there, but I don't use mine. Um, and you buy all these little mini fridges, they cost. Things that have to be cooled or things that have to be heated cost a lot. And those mini fridges are super expensive. Coffee pot heat up. If something heats up, it has a lot of wattage. It costs a lot to use a coffee pot. So it's okay to use a carrot. You heat it up, you put your little pot in, you make coffee, and five minutes later you're turning off. That's not that much. But like, oh, let's just leave the coffee pot plugged in and hot because, you know, we want coffee for the next three hours and people are still sleeping. That costs a lot of money. Iron, people don't iron their clothes much anymore these days, but iron costs a lot of money because they heat up. Clothes dryers cost a lot of money. Anything that heats up is going to cost more than something else. Okay, do you feel confident enough that you can finish homework four and then homework five on your own over the weekend? Okay, that's it, that's all then. That's all we need to do. Okay, so we'll stop and then you can finish on your own. All right, and again, you can use any, any food items, you can use any plug-in items that you want and look up on the internet anything that you don't know. Yeah.